Dear students, today we shall discuss on the topic teachers of yesterday and today. A good teacher is one who can inspire hope, ignite imagination and enhance the love of learning. In the words of Albert Einstein, it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expressions and knowledge. We teachers should be encouraging and supportive and perform the role of human facilitator in teaching learning situations so that the learners can discover their talents, realize their physical, social, intellectual, spiritual and moral potentials to the fullest and develop desirable social and human values. The Qatari Commission of India, in recognizing the importance of teachers, states that the destiny of India is being safe in her classroom. Dr. Radhakrishnan aptly remarked the teacher's place in the society is of vital importance. He acts as the point for the transmission of intellectual tradition and technical skills from generation to generations and helps to keep the lamp of civilization burning. Unfortunately, in many countries, including India, teaching is treated as a second profession and the society is at risk of losing our talented minds to the confines of traditional professions. Now let us discuss about what makes a good teacher. Is it the one the humor or the ability to care about the students? Is it planning, hard working and self-discipline? Is it about leadership, enthusiasm, a contagious love of learning and good communication ability? Most people would agree with me that the most important factor in educational reconstruction is the teacher, his personal qualities, his educational qualifications, his professional skills, and the place that he occupies in the community. Here, we must keep in mind that great teachers are the ones who inspire their learners to achieve not just in tests and examinations, but in life. Excellent exam results can be the fuel to power young minds to achieve further and to discover more, but they are certainly not the end in the learning journey. The 2014 UNESCO Global Monitoring Report titled Education for All highlighted the need in India for trained motivated teachers to make sure learners are meeting basic standards. A brilliant teacher encourages a wider world view to the learners by giving them wider examples of perspectives or using pedagogies and assessment techniques that develop learners' cognitive, social, and emotional skills. They are intentional, responsible for their learners, reflective as learners themselves, innovative and equipped for future challenges, engaged intellectually and ready to make a difference. A good teacher must understand the subject being taught and create learning experiences that makes the aspects of subject matter meaningful for students. And a good teacher must understand how children learn to develop and can provide learning opportunities that support their intellectual, social, and personal development. And further, a good teacher must understand how students differ in their approaches to learning and create instructional opportunities that are adopted to diverse learners. 
and more, a good teacher must use various instructional strategies to encourage students' development of critical thinking, problem solving, and performance skills. Further, a good teacher must motivate and manage the classroom to create a learning environment that encourages positive social interaction, active engagement in learning, and self-motivation. A good teacher must use knowledge of effective verbal, nonverbal, and media communication techniques to foster active inquiry, collaboration, and supportive interaction in the classroom. Furthermore, a good teacher must plan instructions based upon knowledge of the subject matter, the students, the community, and the curriculum goals. He uses formal and informal assessment strategies to evaluate and ensure the continuous intellectual, social, and physical development of the learner. He continually evaluates the effects of his or her choices and actions on others and actively seeks opportunities to grow professionally. And last but not the least, he fosters relationship with the school colleagues, parents, and agencies in the larger community to support students' learning and well-being. Let us now discuss about the teachers of yesteryears. In ancient India, the teacher occupied a very respectable place in society and were regarded as holy persons. He was the legendary guru, the dispenser of knowledge, and the spiritual caretaker of his students. He had the greatest role in molding the future of the country. Of all professions, he was the noblest and the most difficult and the most important. He had to cultivate himself humility, compassion, and the spirit of loving. He was an ideal example to his pupils. He was expected to devote his life to the course of teaching in the missionary spirit of self-sacrifice. And the society laid down the principle that both the public and the state would have the learned teacher and the educational institution very liberally. The teacher would teach both secular as well as religious arts and sciences. His duty was to lead the students from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge. Since the guru was expected to train the brahmachari, means the student, ethical values, he naturally supposes all the quality. For the Hindus, teaching was considered to be a holy duty of the Brahmana class. The principal occupation for a Brahmana was worshipping the deity, teaching others how to worship the deity, studying the Vedic literatures, teaching the Vedic literatures, accepting charity from others and again giving charity to others. He should make his livelihood on the charity he received as exchange from these occupational duties. He was exempted from the levy of taxes. He was to observe control of the mind, control of the senses, austerity and penance, cleanliness, satisfaction, forgiveness, etc. He should be merciful, simplistic, and truthful, and surrender completely to Godhead. The Gurukula system of education of ancient India was dedicated to learning all aspects of dharma, that is, the principles of righteous living and comprise personal responsibilities towards himself, family, society, humanity, mother art, and nature. It prepared the brahmacharya, means the students, to face the toughest challenges of his future life. The ancient education system of India was highly prosperous, value-based, and skill-focused. 
it laid great emphasis on cultural heritage and responsibility towards the society and the nation. Upon the child's Upanayanam, the traditional rites that marked the acceptance of the child as a student by the Guru. The then young person began a life in the Gurukula, that is, the household of the teacher dedicated to learning all aspects of Dharma. The aspects of Dharma are the principles of righteous living and comprise personal responsibilities towards himself, family, society, humanity, mother art and nature. Traditional Vedic sciences, phonetics, grammar, astronomy, fine arts, economics, laws, art of warfare, along with the religious texts of the Vedas and Upanishads were studied during Brahmacharya. The Gurukula system of education was dedicated to the highest ideals of all-round human development that is physical, mental and spiritual development leading to realization of Godhood. The system was based on the principle experience is the best teacher. At the end of their training, the students thus immerse as responsible individuals who are well versed and learned in the Vedas and capable of facing the toughest challenges of life. In this 21st century, the role of teachers has dramatically changed. Great emphasis is made on the theories and findings of great educationists and psychologists. John Piaget's Cognitive Developmental Theory, Pavlov's and Skinner's Conditioning Theory, Bandura's Social Learning Theory, Erickson's Psychosocial Theory, Goldberg's Theory of Moral Development, Bygoski's Sociocultural Development, Garner's Theory of Multiple Intelligence, to name a few. In the last few decades, the concept of constructive approach of teaching has gained momentum. Constructivist learning is a student-driven process in which learners develop or construct their understanding of concepts by incorporating their own outside experiences and perspectives, as well as those of other students rather than only receiving information from their instructor. The constructive approach of learning can be achieved through cooperative learning where students work together in small groups to help each other learn and discover and comprehend difficult concepts in groups. Through discovery learning where students learn largely on their own active involvement and the teachers encourage them to have experiences and conduct experiments that permit them to discover principles for themselves. Through self-regulated learning where learners have knowledge of effective learning strategies and know how and when to use them. Through active engagement, which enable students to gain experiences that they can think about and reproduce and consequently develop a relationship with the information and concepts involved. Through intentionality, where learning environments are designed with specific learning goals that help learners understand why the information they are working with is important and relevant. Through complexity, where learners are exposed to and engaged in complicated tasks in order to develop higher order thinking skills. Through collaboration, where individuals must balance their dependency on others with their own accountability to the group 
in order to reach said objectives. Through conversation, where learners develop and expand their concepts of knowledge and information by exposing themselves to new information and alternatives. Through reflection, where learners develop through reasoning and re-examine their ideas. Or, by Goski's idea of scaffolding, where students learn through the assistance provided by more competent peers or adults. Dear students, what is the need of the R for the teachers? Let's see. Teachers should be equipped well to guide the future generation in the fast changing society. The influence of a teacher indirectly extends over many generations. It transcends national and geographical boundaries and it advances the cause of civilization and the world order. The world today is rapidly changing. So in India, new goals are being set up and new techniques are being devised in order to readjust our society to the new situation. The Indian Education Commission 1964-66 focused on the education as education ought to be related to the life needs and aspiration of the people and thereby met powerful instrument of social, economic and cultural transformation. The Chattopadhyay Committee Report of the National Commission on Teachers 1983-85 envisioned the new teacher as the one who communicates to the pupils the importance of the feeling of national integrity and unity the need for a scientific attitude and commitment to excellence in standards of work and action and concern for the society.